I was going out with mum and dad and I said to them, give me five minutes, I'll just take the dogs for a walk around the corner, you know, around the block. Yeah. So I walked around the block and as I hit the corner, um, Jacques put his nose down to smell the grass, as dogs do. And just as he hit that, you saw the gap in the fence, as yeah, you've sent me a photograph. Yeah, I sent you a photograph. It's sorry. a gap of about one paling, isn't it? Yes, it's about one paling, just enough for a, a dog to put his nose out. Yeah. And uh, Jacques put his nose there to smell the grass, and I heard this almighty thump. And next thing I know, Jacques's trying to get away, and this dog has got him by the nose and pulled him into the into the gap. And and I'm hitting this other pit bull on the head and when I hit him on the head to let go and I pulled Jack away there was no face and I thought oh my god and I started screaming like mad neighbors so came it's, out it's, to it's, help me he's ripped Jack's face off he's ripped Jack's face off from the nose from the eyes about an inch underneath the eyes forward there was nothing left of him oh dear yeah. So what happened then? Um, I started screaming and yelling and asking for help. And peop uh, uh, one couple stopped in a car to help me. They rang the police. Other people came out of houses. They were also ringing police. And everyone that came to see what was wrong with me and then saw Jacques, they were screaming, Oh, my God, he's got no face. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I said, you know, please help me. Somebody please help me. Put him down. Somebody help me kill him. Don't let him suffer anymore. Yeah. Uh, but nobody could do that. And, of course, when the police attended, they said that they couldn't do it because it was, um, they're not, they haven't got the power to pull out their firearm and, and put mm -hmm. the dog to, out of his misery. Mm -hmm. And then they that. said that it's not um, in their jurisdiction. It's the, ra it's the council jurisdiction to, to deal with this. It's not police matter. So you took the dog to, to, to the vet, did you? I took the dog to Werribee Vet Hospital. And, he's and they, when she saw him, she said, oh, my God, you know, um, well, you know, there's not much they could do. There's n nothing left. You know, they couldn't even reconstruct. I don't uh, think they long, could reconstruct his How face. long from the attack to when the dog was actually put down? Three hours. Oh, no. Yes, yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to, I was lying on the footpath on the grass with him for three hours. I couldn't move. Was he conscious? Yes, he was fighting, trying to get to his nose and i mean he was just covered in blood oh. you know and neil while i've got you on the phone i'd like to please if you don't mind thank everybody that helped me because i don't know who they are but they all stopped and helped me one woman gave me a blanket to put over jacques i'd like to thank her and everyone that helped me so the, the police and the council say they can't do anything why because of the whole because the, fence. the council said to me that because the um, dog, the attacking dog, is registered and was on his property, he is protecting his property. And, you know, my dog shouldn't have been so close to the fence. And I said to them, well, what if it was a child and the ch you know how children walk past yeah. playing with the paling? And he stuck his hand in there to pat the dog and the dog took off his arm or his face. They said, oh, that's a different matter. That's a, that's a human. I said, oh, I'm sorry. How can it be because it's a human? My dog to me and my children, I have no children. My love goes to the, these dogs. So did, did Jacques actually put his nose through the fence? Did no. You know? The other dog put his nose out to grab it. The, the other dog, well, Jacques was sort of, oh, you know, here or there. He, his nose wasn't in the fence. It was just at the edge of it sort that, of thing. That, he was smelling yeah, the ground. That really shouldn't be relevant anyway because the fence should be safe and the that's dog right. shouldn't be attacking other dogs. Yeah, that's right. And, but it, if you look at the fence line, um, you can see where this dog has punched holes through the fence and they've tried to fix it. You know, they've put it, another okay, piece of so wood there. So what do you want now, Maria? What do you think should happen? Well, the, the owner didn't even come and, and sympathise with me. He didn't even say, I'm sorry for what happened or anything. I, I would like, because you know, I'm a pensioner, and I can't really afford to pay for his um, um, cremation cremation and his euthanasia, uh, what is it, when they euthanasia. put them to sleep? Euthanasia, yeah. Euthanasia. Um, you know, it, that came to a hell of a lot of money. How much? Uh, it came altogether $750. Jeez. 
And then I, I did call, for, I did ring um, legal advice, and they wanted an exorbitant amount, $1,500, just to write just a letter. To deal with it. Did, did, the, did you see the owner? Did they speak to you? Yeah, all I saw was the owner popped his head over the fence and said to me, why are you screaming, you stupid idiot? Mm. And I said to him, look what your dog's done to my dog. He's taken his face off. He said, well, stop shouting. And that's all he said to me. Didn't say, I'm sorry. And both the police and the council say there's nothing they can do. No, both of them said nothing they can do because he's registered and because he's on his own property protecting his property.